Welcome back to Telltale Books. I'm trying to get a really good variety of the top writers, particularly top science fiction writers, and particularly those from the past that aren't being talked about so much today. And one of those writers, although in the last few months I've noticed he's been getting a lot of attention, but one of those writers that I've always admired since I began reading science fiction is Robert Silverberg. Like I say, lately he's been getting a lot of attention. He has always had a fair amount of respect, but I think for a lot of years he kind of fell quiet there. Um, but when I was young, I'm trying to remember what my first Robert Silverberg story was, and it's not coming to mind. Um, he wrote uh, a number of long works for the mag for Isaac Asimov's science fiction magazine in the 1980s, which really impressed me and made me... Oh, the first one was Lord Valentine's Castle, that's it. Um, in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, in 1979, he serialized his novel, Lord Valentine's Castle. And so it goes all the way back to pretty close to the earliest magazine I read, because I only discovered magazines with the October 1978 issue of, of fantasy and science fiction. <clears throat> so anyway... Silverberg has always been an author that I really liked. But I, I have to admit, I haven't read much of his earlier work. I've only read the stuff that's been published since I started reading in, in 1979, and, and I haven't read all of it at that. So I definitely wanted to add Robert Silverberg to my list of authors that I'm going backward and, and reading everything I can get my hands on in order of publication. Now, Silverberg makes it difficult because um, he wrote a lot of novels under pseudonyms for an erotic pu publisher. It was softcore porn in the late 1950s and, and through the 60s until about 1967. He wrote two to three of these books every month. It was amazing, and well, I don't expect to be able to track all those down. I do have a handful of them, about half a dozen, that I'm going to try and just see what they're like. Um, but I doubt I'll read every one of those, because those, they were not very well produced, and um, they were written super fast, so I don't expect they'll be all that good. And uh, there are a lot of people that are collecting that early erotica right now, so the prices are up there. So it's kind of a ridiculous situation. Anyway, there's also the question of his very first short story, which is titled, Where Elf the Sacred River Ran. And that was published in, I believe it's a fanzine. Yeah, it's a fanzine called The Avalonian issue number one in January of 1952. I can't come across anything regarding this. The story has not been collected. Um, the magazine doesn't exist online as a PDF the way that even the fanzines, a lot of them are out there and available. This one is not. I cannot come up with that one, try as hard as I might. So I have to move on then to number two, which is called Gorgon Planet and has an alternate title of The Fight with the Gorgon. Now, Gorgon Planet was published in Nebula Science Fiction Magazine, issue number seven, in February of 1954. The story is pretty basic. It's If, if you're familiar with Perseus and his fight with Medusa, the Gorgon, this story just takes that and puts it on an alien planet where the Gorgon is not a goddess or a woman turned into a monster, but instead the Gorgon is an alien creature and they have to fight it. And, they, and similarly, when you look at it, you turn to stone. It's a, it's a very enjoyable short story and it 
also, if, if you like Greek mythology, of course, it, it appeals on that aspect, too, of being a science fictional retelling of Perseus and Medusa. But the story is definitely an amateur work. It feels clunky. It feels... Um, feels like there could be a lot more to it. It feels like the writing is kind of styleless. It, it's definitely an early work. It's definitely an amateur work. Even though it was published professionally, this is not what Silverberg would be capable of later on. It, he was too young at this time and, and uh, too dumb to really do his best work on this story. And and it shows, but it still is enjoyable. If you if you have an interest in Silverberg, or just have a love of old science fiction, it's an enjoyable story to read. It's worth your time. Being just a short story, it won't take much of your time, so it's worth it to check it out and read it. So not a top tale on his first effort, but how many of them are? Very few authors are, are really hitting a, a high mark on their first story. And Silverberg's no exception. So that's number one, number two, actually, for Silverberg, my first video, but his second story. Number three is called The Silent Colony and was published in October 1954. And so I will be talking about that one the next time that I talk about Robert Silverberg in my videos. Until then, I got lots of other great content coming. Isaac Asimov, J.G. Ballard, Philip K. Dick, Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, all kinds of stuff. And I hope you'll come back and join us. Like us and subscribe to us. And uh, leave comments. What do you think of Robert Silverberg? Have you read his first story? Uh, what do you think about him in general? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear your thoughts about this. So, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.